with the exit of the previous Italian government and you having such a good reputation as a professor and as a regulator, and it seems like the problems are so daunting. Why did you accept this job? Why did you become prime minister? And what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I had always been very reluctant to take on a role in uh, Italian domestic politics. My only policy commitment had been for 10 years as a member of the European Commission. But this uh, request from President Napolitano came uh, obviously in a context uh, which had uh, nothing to do with party politics and uh, which was uh, at such a severe time of crisis for Italy that uh, I could not <laughs> refuse. It's a tough challenge, uh, but here I am. What is your vision for Italy right now? I mean, what do you want to accomplish as prime minister? Where do you see the country in five years? What, how are you trying to change Italy into something other than what it is to get out of this economic crisis? There is a lot of work to be done in uh, removing structural impediments to growth, most of which uh, have to do with uh, this uh, excessive power of the interest groups relative to public powers. There has been this mutual disarmament and the majority which now supports the government in parliament is not a structured majority. It's not a coalition of parties. It's a collection of three main parties, each of which talks to us, but they don't talk to each other because they come from a still very hot period of extreme belligerence. But now things are evolving, and uh, I don't know whether you saw already today's interview uh, of Mr. Berlusconi to the Financial Times to appear tomorrow. Berlusconi to abandon frontline politics. Here they say Mr. Berlusconi also gave his strongest endorsement to date of the technocratic government led by Mario Monti. And uh, what he says at the end is very revealing. The hope is that this government will have the chance to propose great structural reforms without which we cannot think of having a modern and truly free and democratic uh, country. Why do you think that he changed his tune so dramatically? Because he, would, he did not say that as recently as five or six weeks ago. I mean, it seems like he's come quite to middle ground all of a sudden. I think he sees uh, that uh, he's in fact uh, gaining ground in international um, credibility and reputation and consideration as a statesman, mm. the more he is seen to favor this uh, transformational evolution in Italy, which of course I welcome. I think that you've been a, a longtime proponent of greater European integration. Um, you've written, I believe, frequently on it, and you've yeah. always been at the forefront of a more integration philosophy. Going back 10, 15, 20 years, as the euro was being conceived of and implemented, and some people at the time, you can now go back and, and certain economists said that there's a, there's a fundamental flaw here. There's, there's a monetary union without a fiscal union. As you were at the table of the creation of the euro, did, did you see that this crisis was on the horizon 10, 15 years out, that, that it would come to a head like this in this way? Uh, in some sense, yes, but it would be very presumptuous to say that, that I saw it uh, coming. But uh, I would have thought that uh, the euro would be more at pains in asserting itself uh, as a stable currency, which it has and which it still is in spite of the eurozone crisis. I did uh, see two big uh, um, deficiencies of the construction. One where we did achieve uh, a lot of progress, but not enough, was uh, the single market. Now, uh, we talk of uh, Economic and Monetary Union, EMU, but the E in Economic and Monetary Union, the Economic Union, has been very much neglected. Now it's time to put in place a deeper, uh, more solid single market and also more growth-oriented policies. It almost feels like what you're doing isn't just economic reform. 
do you feel that you're not only trying to change the economy, but to a certain extent you're trying to almost change a certain aspect of the culture, a certain way that Italy, that people live and work? I hope I do, because I believe that uh, uh, structural reforms would not really take hold. I mean, they would be, if anything, ephemeral. The daily political life has diseducated the Italian people, and we tend to project all the evils in the political class, whereas we would be perfect and totally innocent. We need to try and give a sense of meritocracy, of competition, of things that uh, we believe are necessary. Do you foresee that there will be 17 or more members of the Eurozone? Meaning, do you foresee as a possibility a forcible exit of Portugal or of Greece or Ireland? Or do you think that the Eurozone is committed to at least maintaining the current group in the Euro? My confident forecast uh, is that uh, there will be 17 plus. 17 plus. Yes, plus several.